Hello, I'd like to welcome you to today's Makino Experience Center. My name is Bill Howard. I'm a product line manager for vertical machining centers here at Makino. Um, today's topic is how to slash mold production times with high speed motion control. So that's the topic. And actually you'll, you'll, we'll quickly morph into a Makino S terminology called Super GI, uh, Super Geometric Intelligence. So that's what's behind this. Uh, while we're talking today, you'll notice on the right side of your screen, there's a chat box and there's a red box there at the bottom. That's for questions and answers. So if you have questions and answers while we're, our questions, hopefully I have the answers. If you have questions while we're going through today's Experience Center, please feel free to type those in. They'll show up here and at the end of the presentation, we'll have some time to address your questions. I'm coming to you today from one of two Experience Centers at Makino Mason headquarters. That's the building on the right hand side here. We have two experience centers here. On the left hand side, that's our facility in Auburn Hills, Michigan, just north of the city of Detroit. We have two more experience centers there as well. The neat thing or the, about these experience centers is it allows us, if you have a project, you're thinking about a machine, maybe you want to automate, that allows us to get together with you. We can have a personal, very focused, private, confidential meeting. And the nice thing about this, we can bring all of our folks and put them around the table here. You can bring all of your folks and put them around the table there so that you don't have to decide, you don't have to travel who's going to go and who's going to stay. Everybody can share in the information and exchange of ideas. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're working on a project or a part or automation, as I said, we have the abilities, talk to your local representative. We have the ability to have a very, very focused, confidential experience center just for you, your team, and our team to work it out. So. That's the background on the experience centers. Uh, as I said, today's topic is basically slashing mold production times and, and by high speed machining. But the key for Makino is Super GI.5. GI stands for geometric intelligence. So we're going to start on today's Experience Center presentation. Let's talk about capabilities and background and some history and just general topics about die and mold machining and also what Super GI5 brings to the table. What are the challenges of reducing costs for die and mold? Well, there's kind of three areas, if you will. There's before, during, and after. Before, program processing time. How long and how many hours and how much time does it take you to even get ready to develop the program and get ready to put it on the machine? So obviously that is a time-consuming process that you're not making parts, you're not machining the cavity, the cores, while you're doing that. During is machining time. Obviously, we're talking about here complex, contoured, 3D surfaces, typically defined by very small blocks of, of information. So machining times, obviously, depending on the size and the complexity and the geometry, can be very long. How can we slash that. And then after, once I take the core and cavity, the parts off of the machine, I'd like to be done. 
I, I really don't want to have to go in there and do post machining processing, you know, polishing, hand finishing of the free surfaces. Wouldn't it be great to collapse down the programming time, the machining time, and potentially totally do away with that post process polishing, hand finishing? Well, what if there's a solution to improving? cost reduction all the way through that cycle. Let's go back years and years and years. Uh, what is the benefit of geometric intelligence? Well, this is a 2D part. This goes back into the 80s. Okay, maybe, yeah, mid-80s. And you can see this is programmed in 2D. And you'll notice the undershoot in the corner. You'll notice the overshoot. Look at the circle in the middle. It's just a simple diameter and you can see. So the problem was a couple things. Number one was processing speed of the, the computer, the control. The second was driving information to the servos. The third was responsiveness of the servos how quickly once the control makes up its mind to move can you actually move the axes to where the control wants you to be. Now, by contrast, this is a part machined with SGI, Super Geometric Intelligence. Look at the sharpness of the corners, no overshoot, no undershoot. You know, focus on the circle. That's a simple 2D diameter. Look at the difference between the pre and post SGI capability. Well, you say, okay, Bill, <laughs> great. That's a 2D application. My dyes and molds are more than 2D, they're 3D. So what do you have for me there? Well, again, let's go back. And this is a relatively high definition, full contoured 3D complex geometry part. And that's run without SGI. First thing you'll notice is the overshoot and undershoot, the sloppiness. You can see down here the matches and blends, also the tooling marks. So obviously if you were to take this part off of your machine and consider that your finished product, you're going to spend a lot of time hand polishing, hand finishing, getting that ready uh, to work. By contrast, same program, same machine, everything else, this is with SGI. Notice we've cleaned up all this garbage down here where it matches and blends. Look at the, the tooling marks. There's a significant difference in the quality of the workpiece coming off the machine. That cuts way down on any post-process hand finishing, scraping, you know, whatever you want to call that. So there is one of the visual differences, if you will, in both the 2D and in this case a 3D application of super geometric. Now, Makino's had a very long history, you know, starting way back with the first, C uh, first NC control put on a machine all the way through. Right in through here, you'll notice GI starts to be developed. Then you get into, you know, motor control, loss motion control, you know, second generation, new control and feed softwares, Super GI3, Super GI4, Super GI5. So this is a, you know, obviously SGI5, we're on our fifth generation of this proprietary Makino product. And keep in mind, it's coming from a company, Makino, that made and cut our teeth, if you will, in the dye and mold industry. So we're familiar and comfortable in 3D contouring complex uh, geometries. This is our latest product. It's Super GI5. Uh, it's patented. There's a number of patents. And you'll notice there's a kind of a benchmark part there. It's a little powdered metal uh, mold. And you'll notice that if we go back, 
this is cycle time over the years. So we've come from somewhere north of, you know, 45, 46 minutes all the way down to where we're 15, less than 15. You'll notice here 14.22. So we've, t we've seen 24, 25% reduction in the cycle time of that typical part that's running the same program, same tooling, everything, just with progressive generations of super geometric control. This is a close up of that. There's the little mold. And again, here's the cycle time. You'll notice we're now down to, we started up here at over 45 minutes. And we're now down to 14. So the whole idea here is if I can reduce the time that the work spends on the machine, that obviously is expensive. You're billing that at so much per hour. So if I can reduce the time on the machine, I've reduced your costs. The other thing is by doing it accurately, I can also reduce your post-processing and your hand finishing capability. So that collapses two of those three areas, the on machine time and the post processing time. Now, what are the objectives? Well, number one, with Makino, high accuracy is always the driving force. And in this particular case, we want high accuracy in complex contoured dye and mold type applications. We want to feed at high speeds because the high speeds are critical in order to cutting down the cycle times. It's designed specifically to handle many continuous small blocks, millimeter or shorter, in the NC program typical of machining in a dye mold world, cores, cavities, where you're doing complex three-dimensional freeform cavities and core surfaces. What we want to do is achieve high-speed machining. We want to achieve a much higher accuracy than conventional approaches. And we want to significantly reduce processing time. That's where the high speed comes in. Obviously, all of this combines to improve your productivity. Higher accuracy means less hand finishing, polishing afterwards, faster, Reduce cycle time, again, improves your productivity, reduces your costs. How does it work? Well, this is a generic kind of high level, but if you were going to machine a round circle, we could do it any number of ways. You could give it a point and a radius, or you could define points, the little red dots there, and the interesting thing about it, that's a 100 millimeter diameter circle. The more points we define, if you think about getting from point A to point B, the more points, if uh, here's A, here's B. If I have to move from here to here and then from here to here, those are pretty big moves in X and Y. Okay, that's the block length you can see defined over there and consequently the tolerance. By having those big step overs, and step ups, I can have a big block length, but I also have a much bigger core, what's called a chordal tolerance. Well, you can see here, simple math, by going in and doing more and more, here's 22. If I wanted, what, what is that, 50 micron chordal tolerance. So here's your chordal tolerance. If I wanted a 50 micron, put 22 points in there, I'll be 50 micron. Notice if I go to 31, I drop that from 50 micron down to about 25. All right. Uh, if I drop, I'm sorry, that's 500 to 250. If I go to 99 points, I'm now at 25 micron. And if I go 497 points, I'm now at one micron. So this quartal tolerance, becomes one micron with the block length. So it's, it's clear that one of the keys to this is to minimize the step over and the step down. 
What's that do for you? Well, it allows you to carry higher speeds through all the points because there's less delta x, delta y for those points. It ends up in higher accuracy and it ends up in faster machining time because again, there's less delta changes x and y. And that's what this is talking about, the delta x, the delta y. The more points we run, the tighter those points are together. So the change in your vector direction, your delta x, change in x, your delta y, change in y, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means your feed rates are not going to be varying dramatically because your point to point is in a nice, smooth, no major jerks or changes to get from one point to the next. So you have a very good average feed rate and your acceleration deceleration settles way down. And if you think about the change in distance, you know, delta D is V, is velocity. The change in velocity is what? Acceleration. The change in acceleration is jerk. And the last thing we want to do is have dramatic changes in the ack and deck rates because it's going to jerk the machine around. And that's how you get the overshoot, the undershoot, in addition to servo lead and gain and things like that. So all of this impacts the change in vector direction. The tighter the tolerance could make the machine not only run faster, but the tighter the tolerance, the more accurate your final workpiece is going to be. So again, that's a very high level, but it gives you an idea. Now the problem is most controls today do not like a whole bunch of points, tons and tons of points, because it takes a lot of processing time to process those. Consequently, a lot of people go to something that approximates all those points. NURBS, I don't know if you've ever heard of NURBS, but that's curve fitting. And the problem with curve fitting, if you think about die and mold applications, if I use NURBS for the core and then NURBS for the cavity, these are no longer exactly what they're defined in the drawings. They're approximate. Well, every time the core and cavity opens and closes and a workpiece finished plastic injected part comes out, there's going to be variances in thickness in that final workpiece. Those variances in thicknesses cause surface irregularities, discoloration or lack of luster. So it's very critical uh, that you have those surfaces right so that you get a good thickness of your finished workpiece. What is Supergiant? Well, it's a combination of both hardware. So that's the high speed servos on the machine high-speed digital cables, and literally the communications layout internally in the control. So that's the how it works. What makes it work are a significant number of advanced algorithms developed by Makino, proprietary, that control the motion of the machine. First of all, you have to have a very stiff, rigid machine. If the machine's moving all around, it becomes very difficult to get the final spindle point exactly where you want it. So stiff, rigid machine construction in order to maintain the highest programmed feed rates while smoothly following the desired toolpath. We talked a minute ago about the rate of change of acceleration is jerk. Literally, you'll see the machine tool jerking or moving. The other thing that, again, is a Makino S thing, Tuning those servos, X, Y, Z, tilt, rotary, we tune those to get the highest performance of those servers, circularity. So we want as accurate as we can get, and we tune those servos to get that accuracy. Now, there's three basic interconnected factors that come to play in high-speed machining, uh, in an SGI 0.5. Um, 
people tend to want to, for example, how many times have you heard somebody say, oh, my machine has a thousand block look ahead? Oh, okay. That's just one of those three factors. Those three factors block look ahead. Okay, block look ahead is how far ahead in the program am I looking to see changes? As an example, I'm going up the expressway and I'm in the extreme right hand lane and I can see for miles and miles and miles. And way up ahead of me, there's a sign in yellow overhead that says exit only. Well, I can see it coming for miles. I have tons and tons and tons of block look ahead. If I choose to do nothing, block look ahead doesn't mean a thing. Second most important, block processing speed. Okay, I drive on, drive on, I'm coming up to the exit only, and gee, I'm in the exit only lane. What do I do? Block processing speed is how fast the control will process a block of information and make a decision as to what to do. So you have to have the look ahead, but it's got to be matched and blended with your block processing speed. Last but not least, let's paint two scenarios here. One, I'm in that exit only lane, and I've only got 50 to 100 feet before I got to exit. In one scenario, I'm driving the, the Budweiser Clydesdale beer truck. <laughs> In the other one, I'm driving a Porsche. Motion control. I may have not used my block look ahead. I've then used a very fast processing speed to figure out what to do. But will my machine tool, will my vehicle, allow me to make the moves that I need to get over out of that exit only lane. Well, if I'm driving the Clydesdale <laughs> Budweiser pulled uh, <laughs> beer truck, I seriously doubt it. But if you design the machine with extremely good, tight motion control, you have a lot more decision. So you gotta see a lot of block look ahead doesn't do you much if you don't use it. Block processing speed, you know, doesn't really help you unless you see in time to make the decisions. And then finally, once you make the decisions, you got to have a machine tool that's responsive enough to follow the lead. Now, some of this comes by virtue of our vendors. Uh, obviously, we have a fan of control although we put a Makino-esque Pro 6 front end on it. Uh, the SGI software, SGI.5, the current generation, that's a Makino proprietary product that rides there. We use Fanuc servo technology. And as Fanuc has developed and moved their product, you can see there on the right, I'm sorry, the left-hand side, that's the noise that's typical in the past generations of the servo motors. This is now the noise of the new modern servos. So they've got an, what they call an optimized magnetic circuit. What does that mean? It means there's a lot tighter. You'll notice here versus here. There's a lot tighter control over the servo and the servo feedback. So which one of those do you think you can tune to be more responsive? Well, obviously the newer generation improves feed smoothness by more than three times. Allows you to have much tighter servo tuning. So when we go in and tune our servos, we have the benefit now of this optimized magnetic circle, uh, circuit, I'm sorry. That gives us more responsiveness and reduced cycle times. Another thing we want to talk about is velocity, acceleration, jerk. We talked earlier about the rate of change of distance is velocity. How fast can I get there? The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. And then obviously the rate of change of acceleration is jerk. What we're looking at here is, again, this is a, a FANUC development, 
but we utilize it. And we've gone to, in the past, you just kind of turned the servo motor on and it just took off the red line. So it may jerk the structure all around, but it's going to have a linear acceleration. The problem is, obviously, that's not good for the machine. You tend to have overshoot, undershoot, jerk. Again, the rate of change of acceleration. So come up with a bell-shaped curve, the green curve. And what that means is I want to start off at a rate of change of acceleration relatively slow until I get things moving. And then I want to really ramp up. And then as I'm stopping, I want to start slowing down. So you'll notice we're slower off the gate, but we reach our peak here and then we're starting to slow down. So that minimizes the rate of change of acceleration and deceleration as well. You notice that's an act and a deck circle. Um, so that minimizes, if you will, the jerk on the machine tool. The other thing you'll notice is that bell-shaped curve actually ends up saving time on that whole move. We went all the way up to 200 inches a minute, and then we've come back down to zero. So not only is it smoother, better motion, less wear and tear on the machine and all the elements, plus it saves time. So we routinely use bell-shaped curve versus the traditional. Uh, another thing is stick slip. And, and, you know, everybody's aware that when you're machining in one direction and you reverse and come back, there's the potential there for some lost motion. Um, you can see here a little blip. Precise compensation to fit machine structures and character. We can automatically track variable acceleration and completely optimize. You'll notice here HPCC, uh, high precision contour controlling versus SGI. You'll notice that we've actually went in there as we're going from one direction. You're making a circle. You're going from feeding in the positive to feeding in the negative direction. We've eliminated or compensated for the stick motion. That's a patent pending Makino feature versus some of the competitive approaches. What happens here is the software, you know, in a circle, you'll have the plus and minus x axis, the plus and minus y axis. So these algorithms for acceleration and deceleration servo system, this is where we go in and we tune the servo. So tuning the servo minimizes those peaks or bumps and then the algorithm allows us to correct for the error as a result of those bumps. The bottom line is you can contour much more accurately. And as I said, we do final tuning of the machine. There's two pictures here, one at the top. That's a machine on our shop floor. You can see the operator, the runoff guy there. And in the bottom is a thing called a CMD, Circular Measurement Device. We can put that in the spindle and basically, you know, use that to get peak circularity performance in the XY plane, the YZ plane, in the XZ plane. So we tune that machine on the floor before it ever ships to the tightest tolerances and, and tuning of the servos possible. And keep in mind now, that's after a build structure that where we've targeted half the allowable tolerances and typically achieve half of that. So we have an extremely good straightness, squareness, parallelism, and now we're tuning the servos for optimized motion control. Now we're starting to get into some of the very proprietary Makino features. One of the biggest issues or problems in uncontrolled motion on servos is when you tell the machine to go from zero to 500 RP or 500 inches a minute or a thousand and it goes bloop, takes off all right and then you stop it it bloop, comes down if you continue to do that if you continue to do that what typically happens is you heat up the servos 
and the next thing you know you have a thermal alarm and because you've constantly maxed it up, maxed it down, torqued it up, torqued it down, you end up with the machine stopping because of a thermal alarm on one of the axes. We've developed software and you'll see there there's a continuous operation, an intermittent and a max. We want to stay as close to this continuous operating area as possible. So what we don't want to do, and again this gets back, it all fits together, but if you think about delta X, delta Y, if we've got big changes, there's going to be a lot of amping up and amping down. Well, again, that's going to overheat the motor. So what we want to do is maximize the use of the intermediate zone or intermittent zone. We want to stay as close as possible to the operating zone, but we don't want to get up into that intermediate or intermittent zone for ack and deck. So, and normally you're looking about 20 times the rapid rate there per minute. Now, we realized again early on for this to really be advantageous to the customer, there's got to be different modes. And you got to be able to turn it on and turn it off. So, what we've done is you can see there are M codes M250, 251, 252, 256. And you'll notice beside them, there, well, number one, 250 is high accuracy, 251 is high performance, so 251 is going to run faster than 250. you also notice there's a 5 micron by 250 and a 10 micron by 251. What that means is it's a racetrack and there's walls. And what we've done at 250, we've made the walls 5 micron. So we want you to be within plus or minus 2 of the program pathway. With 251, we've opened that up twice as much to 10 micron, plus or minus 5. So obviously you can carry more speed. Again, point to point, delta X, delta Y is critical here as well. Then ultra high, this is for finishing. It's 3, plus or minus 1.5. So now we're getting down to a very, very fine finishing, and that's where we want to eliminate, use that to eliminate the hand finishing post processing. So obviously if you're going in and roughing you can go you know 251 semi finishing maybe M250 and then final M252. There's also an ultra mode there M256 that's for you know you come in let's just say you have a graphite electrode and it comes out of a solid and you want to go in and just get rid of a whole bunch of material. Notice 25 microns so that's plus or minus 12 and a half so that allows you to rough very fast and then step down to maybe M251 uh, for the finishing operation. Now what does that mean? Here is kind of the process time, toolpath uh, tolerance versus time. So the blue obviously is the 251. 250 has a tighter, this is 10 micron, that's 5 micron. And then this is the, the uh, 252. That's 3 micron, plus or minus 1.5. So obviously, as you change that wall for the racetrack, the tolerance, it's going to have an impact on cycle time. You can see we've, at, at 252, we're somewhere around, and this is also toolpath tolerance, but we're somewhere around, what, 40? Uh, four, 45, 48 minutes versus 250, we're 28. So 20 minutes different there on that little example. What are the expectations with SGI.5? Well, so much of it is part dependent. It's geometries, it's material, but we expect or anticipate anywhere from 5% to 60% or more reduction in machining time. So that's the machining time. What about the time to get ready? Remember we talked about pre, during, and post. Well, the pre time is your key in processing time. Our expectations is with SGI.5, we should be looking at anywhere from 48 to 90, 91% reduction in processing time. So that's your pre time. So if you could cut your pre time in half, cut your machining time in half, 
you've now cut half of the time out of your process and hopefully polish free surface finish. So you've totally eliminated your post processing. So you can see how that could have a pretty dramatic impact on your manufacturing operations. I'm going to show you kind of a, an idea here. Conventional technology is over there on the left and what you're going to see is trying to go point to point to point and because of the delta X, delta Y, you're constantly having to tramp on the gas, tramp on the brake, tramp on the gas, tramp on the brake, so that I don't miss the next point. Or the other thing a lot of folks do now with NURBS is they'll try and make a, a, a match, a blend to that, which means you're not running the tool path at all. So you'll see as that car goes, there he's cramming on the brakes because he wants to make that next point. Here he's Again, he's accelerated up over the top. Now he's slowing down. Here he's taking off, going up here. And there he's trying to finish. And so consequently, what happens, your ack and deck is bouncing around like this. Well, as your ack, it's like driving your car. As you take your foot and you cram on the gas, and then you cram on the brake, what happens to your neck? Well, you go forward and you go backward. What is that? That's the rate of change of acceleration, which is jerk. Is that good for your car? Probably not. Do you think that's good for a machine tool? Probably not. What do you think the surface finish for that is going to look like? Well, with SGI, first off, as we just talked about, we establish a tolerance around that tool path. And that's determined by the M codes, 250, 251, 252. Now, as we're running, we have more and more points, so therefore we have less delta X, delta Y, and consequently, you'll notice there's no sparks or flames coming out the back of the car because he's not having to constantly cram on the gas or cram on the brake in order to weave his way through those points. So consequently, he remains on much higher velocity, much lower need for major ack and deck changes and therefore you get a very smooth surface and it's produced in much less time. Smoother finish and less time. And you notice the tack on the one side up and down and up and down and up and down. On the other side it's constant at a very high rate. Now another side benefit here is we're looking at two different cuts. Conventional technology over there, feed at 3,000 millimeters a minute, here 6,000. You'll notice that's the, look at the waviness. You can see it in the part. Here you can see it actually on a plot. So that's your surface finish. Now over here, same thing. But now we've run it with SGI 0.5 and you you know, you can see a little bit, but nothing like that. My goodness. Imagine how long it's going to take you to hand polish, hand finish that out. Versus here, look at that. So, higher speeds, better surface finish, less hand finish. This gets into, <coughs> excuse me, potential cycle time reduction. And there's two numbers up or two charts. There's a blue and a black. Well, the blue is the theoretical. So what it assumes is that you take your tool path and you divide it by your feed rate. That's it. So there's no allocation there, if you will, for acking up, decelerating down. So you'll notice that the theoretical are shorter than the actuals. And that delta or that difference is again the acking up, the acking down. Well you'll notice that the faster I go, 2,000 to 4,000 to 8,000, look at the difference between the theoretical and the actual. We get down here to where the theoretical is only about 25 percent 
And that's because of all the acking and decking and, and speeding up, slowing down, or getting through, you know, having to slow down to get through the points. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means the faster you go, the more potential there is to save cycle time using SGI because what's it addressing? It's addressing the AC and the DEC, the rate of change, delta X, delta Y, point to point. So consequently, you'll see down here, the faster you run, the greater the potential to reduce your cycle time. Now, this is, a, again, that's that little powdered metal part over there. This is 8,000 feed, and there's SGI 3, SGI 5. And I'm not going to let this run, you know, the whole length, but you'll notice the SGI 5 machines run in the first level, so is the SGI 3. Now, SGI 5 is on the second level. SGI 3 just now hit the second level. And this is basically interpolating or, or milling out that pocket. We're at the third level on the five. We're still on the second level on the third. So you can see you can have anywhere from maybe 50 to, I'm sorry, 5 to 60% cycle reduction depending on the geometries. If you look at the history, a competitor today with AICC, about 38, almost 39 minutes. In the past, we'd have been 30. SGI 4, the prior generation, about 16 minutes and a half. We're now down to about 14, 14 and 22 seconds. 14 minutes, 22. So we've seen a 63% reduction from what a competitor. A competitor is going to take 38 minutes, 49 seconds to run that. We ran it in 14 minutes and 22 seconds. So it's 63%. Imagine if you could squeeze 63% of the time on your machine out using SGI.5. The other thing you'll notice that from generation three to generation five, we've reduced 52%. Now, from generation four to five, we've reduced about nine. And the thing about it, it's, it's like everything in life. As you keep improving and cutting down and cutting down, there's less and less to move out. I mean, we're rapidly getting to the point where the SGI.5 cycle time is getting very close to the actual processing, theoretical processing time of the part. So uh, here, quality is another thing. If you look at surface finishes, again, we're using SDI 3, SDI 4, and then SDI 5. If you look at these surfaces, the surface quality doesn't change, even when you reduce the machining time. Feed per tooth is maintained while using SDI 0.5. So we've sped up the process with no impact at all on quality of the part. If you go in and look at, again, this is that little powdered metal archive part, SGI 4, SGI 5. You'll notice that the tolerances are, are still all maximum error prior was 5.2, current error 5.3. And we've pulled out uh, another 40% of the processing time on that particular part. Now another thing that we do, most people's programs, they go kind of like this and this. They, they're contouring, they go line by line by line by line. So consequently, that surface, once you're done machining, that surface is going to have high points and low points and variations by the different lines. So that surface is a combination of all those. This is what it looks like. What we do on SGI-5 is we go in and we consider that surface as one homogeneous surface. And if we have high points and low points, we go in there and we blend that together. What we're looking for 
is the best, highest quality surface finish that we can get. So you can see where here is A, the, this kind of program, and here is B. This is with the SGI 0.5 Pro 6, where we've made a surface of the machining. Let's talk about the pre-processing. We can go in here and as an example, here's a part where we programmed at one micron step to a point. Then we did five and then we did 10. You'll notice the amount of time for processing the program, just crunching all the numbers, went from 60 minutes to under six to under three. So we significantly reduced the CAM processing time at the beginning. So not only can we reduce the machining time, maybe eliminate the post-process time, but we can eliminate the prep time up front as well. And as you can see, we can eliminate significant, 91% in this particular case, by running the 10 micron. This goes in and, and talks about uh, feed. As I said earlier, the faster we run, 5,000 to 10,000, these are the tolerances. So even if we run the high end of the tolerance, the plus or minus, we're looking at a 16% cycle time reduction. If the faster we go, look what happens to that 16% it becomes almost 30%. As we talked about earlier, the faster you run, the more, their, the, more the advantage of SGI 0.5 is to cut out all of that, you know, ack and deck and trying to meet all the points together. Again, this is a competitive machine. Their machining time was 33 minutes. Our machining time was 29. Tolerance 12.7. So we're 12% quicker and we have a better finish. You'll notice, look at all the working marks in that over here along the side in the corners, the blends and matches. So no hand finishing required. So we ran it quicker, 12% faster, and we got rid of the hand finishing. And there you can see on the up surface, look at the profile here versus the profile there. Okay. Same thing on the side of the core. Again, look at very good finish. Over here you can see it looks like chatter, wobble, lost motion in the machine. And then finally on the bottom, again, very smooth, very uniform finish. Over here there's a lot of markings in it. So again, 12% faster and no hand finishing. Let's take a look at a couple other SGI.5 case studies just to give you a background here. <coughs> again, this is SGI 4 at 252. Notice one hour, eight minutes and 53 seconds. We could run it at M251, SGI 4, gets it down to 33 minutes. But look at, the, look at the surface finish here versus the surface finish there. So with SGI 4, we had an issue is we could run it with the higher, faster M code, 251, but the surface finish. Now, with SGI 5, we ran it at 251, so the higher feed rate, higher tolerance, and we still ran it in 30 minutes and 17 seconds. So that's half, a little less than half. And we got, look at the surface finish. So we got a 56% reduction in the cycle time. And we reduced, we, we improved the quality of the part, the surface finish of the part. Here's another, this particular one is not so, well, what facilitates this is SGI 0.5, but what we've done is gone from a two flute to a six flute, which means we could take our feed rate from 5,000 
to 25,400 millimeters a minute. That also allows us to take our RPM and jack it up from 8,500 to 14,000 RPM. So we have, with a multi-flute end mill, five times the feed rate. So if we made, made this part conventionally at the 5,000 feed, you can see the cycle time. We've cut 69% out of this part, 70%. So that's time that you've recouped on the machine. You've reduced the cost of that part. And you look at the surface finish, it's outstanding. It probably does not require, you know, hand finishing post-process. So there's an example where we've collapsed the machining time by 70%. Another one, uh, this is looking at from SGI early version from 13 hours, 13 minutes to 10 hours, 34 minutes to in the current version, 9 hours and 29 minutes. So again, we've taken 29, 30% out of that workpiece from a prior uh, generation of SGI. At this point in time, that concludes the presentation of today's Experience Center, and I'd like to throw it open for questions. I got. Uh a couple questions. I, we re, I ran a little long, so I'll, uh, one of the questions was about, you know, the software, obviously SGI.5 software, but hardware. Well, actually, there's a, a separate, a, what we call an ACU unit, uh, auxiliary computing unit. That's where a lot of that SGI 5 software resides, so it's not, if you will, bogging down the fan and control, and therefore much faster uh, for calculations. Uh, and by the way, that, that uh, ACU unit is also on um, our machines where the collision safeguard software rides as well. So again, we're not burdening the, the control with that uh, capability. Uh, and, and that has obviously high speed communication capability uh, to the servos. And, and so that's kind of the hardware, if you will, background of that. Another question was a kind of, and I'm going to be very uh, uh, general about this, but questions around block and you know, how many blocks and processing speed and all that. Let's just suffice it to say, that compared to a lot of competitive machines, SGI 0.5 is anywhere from, has anywhere from two and a half to 10 times the block look ahead, uh, number one. Number two, as far as actual block processing speed, again, the SGI 0.5 has anywhere that five to 10 times the block processing speed. Now, as I said, you know, you, you got to consider all three elements. You got to consider block look ahead, you got to consider block processing, but then you also have to consider the dynamics of the machine. Is the machine built and capable? Is it tuned in order to make very fast and quick moves? So um, I'm going to end the questions there because of respect for time. I, I did overrun today. I, thank you for joining today's, you know, slash mold production times with high speed motion control. Uh, if you re were registered and uh, for this particular um, experience center, you'll be receiving an email. And in that email, there'll be a link that will allow you, if you have some other folks in your, in your shop or other folks at your company that you think would benefit from seeing this, um, you, you'll be able to use that link in order to share this. Also, in a couple days, this will be posted to our archive here. That'll be under www.makino.com. So uh, again, thank you very much for joining us today.